Hello, please. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Can we start by saluting the flag, standing in the blue and the black? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. It is uh, Tuesday, February 27th. It's 5 p.m. This is the regular monthly meeting of the planning board here in Sag Harbor. Um, minutes. Did folks have a chance to look at the minutes at all? Yep. That were emailed around. Yep. Um, Kathy, you mentioned something about minutes and you were able to fill in some blanks or something. Yeah, there, I, were, there were a couple items that were inaudible that I was able to replace, and there were a couple of, of things that I noticed, but I didn't go line by line, but I did uh, change those. Okay. So. I, I wasn't able to see that. You shared something with me, but I wasn't able to see it. Okay. That's what I was asking. Okay. It was uh, minor. Minor stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I mean, anything you want me to, to include? Sure, sure. Do we want to include that with, with the official? I don't think that they're substantive enough. Okay. 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 Yeah, I, I read through as well, and nothing was nothing was jumping out at me at me as being really a problem. Um, great. In that case, if someone wants to make a motion to accept, second. Thank you, Nat. Thank you, Larry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, Public comment, there's a few people in the audience here tonight. Um, we can't take any questions on pending applications, but if you have general comments about process or other comments you want to, you, you can, now's the time to do it. Come on up. I think you need to introduce yourself. I will do exactly that. Denise Carlotto, 45 Division Street. Um, and I also live on 83 Franklin Avenue. Um, just as far as the planning board is concerned, I was just a little concerned because I know the agenda didn't get posted until today sometime. Um, in the future, I would just hope that it would be done a little quicker. I'm scrambling today. It's hard to get clients here. It's hard to advise them. It's hard to know what is going on with an application. So most municipalities have them ready a couple of days in advance, at least, you know, the Friday before the meeting so that I can manage to get everybody together and get everything organized to be here and not be panicked. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. I was going to mention it myself, and I'm, okay. I'm glad you brought it up because I agree with you 100%. It makes it easier, I think, for all of us. And for me, and for, and for me. Uh, I, think, I think you probably know that we have a, I think we have a new um, um, billing uh, inspector starting this Friday, I think. I'm not sure. Um, so we're, you know, the word would be short staffed slightly. Um, so it's, we're, I, I'm looking forward to that happening. Um, and it, just so you know, I'm I'm a little embarrassed by it, um, and and also because I want I want this to be sort of I want things to be done the week prior. Um, so, um, but thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for listening. Of course. Can of I course. just say something? Because I'm the one that posts the agenda. Yeah. And it was not posted today. It was posted. Um, it was edited and changed, but it wasn't posted today. Right. It was not. Look it up. It was not today. That's correct. You're absolutely right about that. But it was last night. Um, it was a five o'clock last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll 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 work on we'll work on yeah we'll work on the process generally. Yeah, I think we can all help. Yeah, to make to make this and and that will include yeah. you know us getting information to the building department absolutely in a way which allows doors and others to put it together and put it an agenda. So it, yeah. it's a little bit of a, of a team effort. Yeah. Um, but um. Tiffany's right. Um, it, it, it will make their, it's better for everybody. So um, thank you, Tiffany. Um, okay, old business. Um, uh, Eleven Bridge Street, um, which I think we're now calling Eleven Bridge and Five Bridge. I think is what the official nomenclature is. Um, I could be wrong about that, um, but nevertheless. Um, 11 Bridge Street, it's, uh, this is not a public hearing. That was opened and closed. Um, last month, we adopted this, the memorandum uh, for, uh, post pre-submission conference. And um, the applicant has submitted a revised application. Um, and 
you can talk about it if you want to, Kathy, but I believe where we are is you, you, you wrote a memorandum looking at it quickly, which was good. Um, but there's some information still missing I, or there was, an, there was an issue with an online translation of, a, of an EAF or something like that. Right, right. Um, yeah, so we did uh, two Fridays ago, so uh, February 16th, and we were able to look at the, the EAF. We do have a number of questions on the EAF that will be, some of them can be clarified by the updated version that was um, an issue with the PDF. Uh, just so uh, for people who don't know, the EAF is simply shorthand for an environmental form. Environmental assessment form, correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. But can you just describe the project? Yeah, so um, at yeah. previously, uh, as you know, there were five tax lots that were to be utilized for this project. Yeah. Uh, there, this, this will involve seven Bridge Street and 11 Bridge Street only with uh, parking to be provided on five Bridge Street. So, so it's actually. 7 and 11, I stand corrected. Okay. 7 and 11. The name of the application, the applicant <laughs> is still 11 Bridge Street, okay. LLC. Okay. Eleven Bridge LLC. Okay. So, um, so we reviewed the plans, basically had a few comments about things that will need to be submitted in future, but um, for the purpose of CEGRA, State Environmental Quality Review Act review, uh, we would need a updated full EAF and uh those who are those comments are provided in a draft memo, and I'll update it um, and, and circulate that after this meeting um, and to encompass the, the update of the AF that we got that actually has all the responses. Um, and we will, um, and then we can start the agency coordination process once that is, is received. So that mm -hmm. would start next month. Kathy, do you have the image on, on your on your? Are you able to show that put that on the screen? So the board members and others can see um, what just what we're talking about. Okay. Did it, right? Yeah, okay. So this is um, the site layout plan. Yeah. <laughs> can we see on this one as well? Oh, I don't know. Is that something that we can? <laughs> Otherwise, I'll move, I'll move the screen a little bit. Do we? We have a copy though. <laughs> yes. So there's a coordination process. The uh, process when it's a on action by coordination with all the other involved. Sorry, what I'm here oh, okay. oh, okay. 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 um, hold on questions. Coordination. It was my enunciation again, sorry. Just got a shout. Okay. Um, so we're looking at what we're looking at is a site plan. So this is the, the basic, just looking down at it. Uh, so Bridge Street runs north south ish, and Grove Street east west. Right. Um, so the two properties that you know are involved here are the former thousand meter, and uh, there's a home on this property. Right. So um, the gas flow property is to the north. Right. Um, I also have a uh, so this is the the architect's plan. One of the comments is that the actual uh, the, the the square footages have to match exactly sure. between the architect plans and the engineer's plan, but the, they're slightly different. So this shows the uh, the floor plans. With the apartments on the second and third floor, and this is an, a rendering. And okay. so that's the plan that we've been looking at, and we'll be seeing that these um, X website. Right. Right. Be clear about the square footage of the building and the number of units. It's like this. I can. I can. Uh, oh, uh, six feet four thousand four hundred and twenty nine square feet is the total gross floor area. Um, that includes a sixteen thousand three hundred eighty eight square foot parking garage on the on the main level parking parking uh, internal parking right 
And uh, there are a total of 44 apartment units, 28 of which are market rate, 16 workforce. Okay. Um, and the ground floor also has 7,935 square feet of commercial space, which is not retail, as noted on the plan. Not retail, is what you said, right? There's no retail, right? right. Just office space. Um, commercial, so it's, commercial. Not, it's not been defined yet. As far as I know. Okay. So, yeah, there's a number of uses that are uh, commercial or office that are, are permitted okay. in the office space. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, so, just to be clear for those in the audience and online, um, that EAF, that form, will be, will the applicant and the village will be working on that? over the next month to try to make sure it's all filled up properly. Uh, and then we'll, we'll revisit this a month from now at the March meeting. And hopefully at that point, we'll be able to start coordinating for CCRA. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. And, and is there, I just was interested in impacts in process if there's substantial changes in the plans. I mean, is, are there times when you trigger another public input? Are there times when CICRA would have to change if the plans change again? Uh, yeah, so so basically, this is how the process works. We had a free submission conference on the first application. They made significant revisions yep. um, to that application. We don't have another pre-submission conference, but we just start with the normal site plan process. Um, there, there are going to be a public hearing process during site plan review as right. part of the site plan review. Right. It'll be, as, because there's special exception permits requested as well. Yep. It's mandatory public hearings for that. So there will be more public input on that. And I would think for secret as well, likely, depending, 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 on, depending, what the, yeah. depending on what the outcome is. That's right. Yeah. Um, plus zoning board and other places as well. Um, you, uh, I was just talking about this point. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, um, you're, you're, gentlemen, you have a process question? Could, yes. Would you come up here and, and, and stuff? But I won't, I won't be asking, answering any questions or won't be taking any questions of the awesome. Okay. okay. Hi, I'm Lazi Arbelus. I live on Spring Street. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I just want to confirm that this is a new kind of, this is a new project and a proposal. So we're going to have a chance, as Liz just said, to review and see the application and have time to come up here and make comments. Yeah, and there, will be, a, there will be a public hearing on the From site. The I just said that. Yeah. I just wanted to confirm yeah. that yeah. I'm not missing yeah. anything else. Missing no. anything. The process is complicated. Yeah. It'll yeah. be yeah. noticed. It'll be in the it's paper. It'll be, a, it'll be before this board. There'll be a public hearing process as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Thank you. For the site plan and special exception permit. Thanks. Yep. You're welcome. Um, OK. Um, we're going to hold. We're going to hold off on questions until we, yeah, we, because this is not a public hearing. hearing. It's not a public hearing. No. Um, you think it'll all be available next month? That's my only question. It'll all be available online. Uh, okay, we're going to move on. Um, thank you, Kathy, for that. Um, and and I'll coordinate with uh, the village clerk to have the uh, plans uploaded to the to yeah. the county uh, board builders. Yeah. Yeah. And to, okay. if, I don't know. If, I don't know if people in the audience heard that, but to be clear, we're, the the village is, is putting online on the website the applications as as they come into us, um, so that the so that people in, the, in in the world can look and see what we're seeing once it's officially uh, uh, in our in our books. So if you're wondering what the application looks like it will hopefully it'll be there later this week uh, um i don't have the power to put it on but it, it can be done in the in the building so give us a couple of days and it should be online on the website okay let's move on and we'll see her questions no, i'm sorry and we're waiting on secret documents to go in the next show yeah, we don't need to table anything, do we? Because um, it's not a public hearing, right? Um, all right. Number two, page uh, Main LLC, page restaurant 63 Main Street. Um, it worked. It's an application for a site plan for a proposed renovation of the existing second floor, uh, right? Um, and we had the we had the pre-submission 
public hearing. I think was with that it was a couple months ago. Last month we we adopted it uh, or adopted the member the mem memorandum that NPV submitted. Um, and where are we now with this? We're um, uh, so this is also requires a coordinated coordinated review under CEPRA, the type one action. So the the letters were sent out to the involved agencies on February 8th, right? Oops, sorry, February 8th. So that's a 30 day window to allow the other agencies to respond. Yep. So that has not passed yet. So there is, there's no action at this time to, to take on. And I know, in, it, it, um, Kathy, in your memorandum, there were several um, comments about what we, were, we, we needed some more information from, from the applicant. Or, right. Uh, you're referring to the that was the pre-submission conference report that was adopted at the last meeting. Yes. And there were a number of items that um, needed clarification on the site plan. Uh, right. Most most notably the where the uh, the restaurant seats are located and are to be located. So that way that can be clarified that, um, that a lot of this hinges on the parking. That there is a the. Um, the applicant is allowed to have additional restaurant seats because of the change in the code of the required number of parking spaces per restaurant seat. And, uh, but they can use it in upstairs or they can use it at back page, but not both. And that was the determination that the building inspector provided to us. This also requires zoning board, uh, but they can't go, they can't get the zoning board relief until a uh, secret determination is, is uh, adopted. Right, right. Um, Tiffany, you have anything you want to say to this? They can they can submit to the CPA. Right. <laughs> they just can't get a final decision. Right. Tiffany's for a lot of 45 years in the street for the applicant. Um, we are in the process of, of dealing with the zoning board application and getting that submitted. Uh, we do have the pre-submission report, um, and we'll be addressing all of those issues once we get through the zoning board. There's no almost no point in addressing them with you until we get through the zoning board. But as far as the seating is concerned, I'll just go back to that for a second. I'm sure the village has a file probably this thick somewhere on the litigation that resulted in the seating, the seating at that page. What that seating is, legal seats. They are legal seats. What they are to be used for is a different question. So I, I don't want there to be any confusion about the number of seats in page currently is a legal number of seats. What those, the use of those seats, whether they're restaurant seats or waiting seats, is very much dependent and very much governed by the litigation and the stipulation of settlement that was introduced by the village. Right. So it, it doesn't really affect the dining seats. It affects sort of the use of those seats and how they're used and how that's enforced by the village, but it doesn't affect the parking and the sort of seating are, are, associated with the upstairs. Are you saying there's no dining in the back, in back page? There is a stipulation of settlement. I have to review that. So okay. like, I did ask for the file. I got the file from Doris today. Yeah. But it's not in the actual building file, which is like a thousand pages. So I have to actually go to the clerk's office and get the file from there and review the, the litigation file. Right. It was a very complicated and strange sort of litigation. But what's not complicated is, is what's, how the space is being used. We know that they're serving back there. That's an enforcement issue for the village, which, I, you know, we're at the applicant is required to comply with whatever stipulation the village has put in place. How we go about and I will, I, will, I will add to you. It's not before the, this board, it's before the building department. But the applicant is, is required to, uh, to adhere to what the building, what the planning board has uh, agreed to in the past. In 2015, we have a determination that um, is, uh, in my mind, they're not adhering to it. So to my mind, it is entirely relevant that what's happening at that page to what you so want to do upstairs. So you're talking about an existing violation on the property that you want I'm to talking about use of property. Remedy. Talking about use of property. Right. And okay. so that Understood. needs to that needs to be clarified. Right. Understood. But okay. just so that we're clear, like I said, this parking, it doesn't really have much to do with parking. It does. It has more to do with the use of those seats. Because the seats themselves, the chairs themselves are legal seating. What they're used for is a different story. Okay, I understand, I understand what you're saying. So you're saying if they're used legally, they won't trigger parking. Exactly. If they're used legally pursuant to the stipulation of settlement and what the village agreed to, then they don't trigger any additional. I, I hear what you're saying. Yes. Does the does the current document when you submitted the plan with the seating chart on mm -hmm. does it match up with that 
So it doesn't reflect any of the outdoor, any of the, anything other than restaurant seating. The plans that you have before you reflect only restaurant seating. I think it would Legal help to clarify whatever the restaurant. agreement was with the city and with the village was on the document itself because it's really confusing if we're looking at just restaurant seating but all this other stuff's going on. Right, because there is legal seating. And if there's a legal settlement, purpose. yeah, if there was a settlement around this, it should be charted on right. that document so that it's clear. Okay, I will go over that with, with council. And yeah, I have to get that. When we when we come back before this board, yeah, like I said, after we're done with the zoning board, when we come back here, and hopefully by then we will have some okay. resolution of how that is happening. Okay, I think that would help clear up this for the future too. If they want yes, to absolutely. Else, so. absolutely. And, and it will be important in terms of term, determination uh, for, uh, on, on the on the environmental aspect. I'm sure. Good, good. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions on uh, on page? Okay, let's move on then. Number three, 22 Long Island Avenue. Um, space, AKA West Water Street, Wines and Liquors. Um, I've noticed some that. So this was a, a discussion item last week. Tonight's so essentially, it's a, it's a uh, site plan review. Um, this is a, a property that was a liquor store, which is a, um, a, an allowed use in the business district. Uh, it'd be a change of use to a restaurant, a restaurant, which is also a, a permitted use. So it's uh, not complicated that way. Um, they have modified their plan um, and changed it, put in a bathroom, for example, and, and reduced the number of seats because of, because of what they, the feedback we gave to them uh, a month ago. And I, I think you've all seen the, the uh, modified proposal. Um, I, I went over there and looked and the, the property, there is now a bathroom in the, in the plan. It's an ADA compliant bathroom. There is ADA accessibility to the, this place, the, the um, space itself. Um, there will be additions to the roof for ventilation for the, for the uh, restaurant use, but it is placed in a, in a location which is not visible from the street. So everything seems quite um, lined up. Um, and we talk about parking as well. And come on up, um, Tiffany. I just want to bring up to piece from Lana 45 Division Street for the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, just want to bring up one other issue, which is garbage removal. Thank you. I don't think that anyone is really aware because you don't even see it. There is a complete commercial garbage enterprise that goes on in the back of that building and sort of backs up to it's on the say it's on the Piotrowski yeah. side yeah. of the building. Yeah. And so that's where all the trash is going to be located. That's why you don't really see any dumpsters over there because all of the trash from the entire building is dealt with in one area. So that's where this trash room is located. As Thank well. you. That's where it's required to be. That's so. perfect. That's perfect. Good. Um, uh, Kathy brought up a review of, of this. I, I don't know if there's much that we need to add to it. We, um, the, the, the parking is no longer an issue as far as I'm concerned, as far as I think. I understand um, uh, the number of seats have been reduced, um, and therefore complies with what is what was what was associated with the liquor store. Um, so um, there was a question in your memorandum, Kathy, whether that should that calculation should be noted somewhere, either on the site plan or in our in our um, in our write up that we did. Decision. I think it's fine to include it in a decision. That's no, fine. But they don't have to go back and revise the plans. Yeah, fine. That's fine with me. Um, Kathy also pointed out that, and as did Liz, that um, the, the planning board has the, uh, we have the option of, if we think that we having a public hearing on this would lend, would bring us more information and help us make a decision, then we can have, have a public hearing, but we also have the option of waiving a public hearing. No, um, not waiving it because you don't, so you're not required by law to have it. Okay. That's all. So not requiring one. You, it's so not your discretion. Does that, you want one or not, thank you all. for the clarity. Sorry. Um, no, thank you. Um, I don't, I, I, on this situation, I think that we get public hearings for this. It's a tenant, it's an existing building use. It's right. Existing building, just a tenant going in the, in the space that's complying with the code. Yeah. So. Yeah, a minimal amount of seating. Right? Yeah. Do you, have a, you guys feel the same way? Yep. 
Okay, then um, do we need to have a, a, a determination of an official determination on that effect? Or we just decide this way. You can just decide this way. You don't yeah. have to have a hearing. It's your Good. discretion. Fine. And then you can direct us to, you know, after you discuss it, what you want to do. So um, I, I think it's fine. I mean, it, 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 the whole thing seems like perfectly suited. The location is perfectly suited. The, the parking's uh, uh, within requirements, right? Everything and it's an allowable use, right? Yeah, yeah it's an allowable, allowable use. use. Yeah. Allowable use. Building, so, one one minor thing is that under the code, the, um, there should be a referral to the ambulance company. So that should be just done as a courtesy, just to make sure that there isn't, you know, that they should have input if there is. This is the time to get it. But again, this is an existing building, so just you know, the code requires it. So we should send that off to the ambulance, right? Um, and then A, A or B. You know, the signage would require approval. Right. Uh, but we'll be there. Tiffany did mention that already. So, That's right. Um, and it hadn't been mentioned tonight that a crease trap will be added. They, there will be a, um, and, you know, an enhancement to the existing connection. There, there was a, a letter that we all received from the um, fire marshal sort of, um, reminding the applicants that they had to do that. Right. And that has been done. We are in. We are in front of the Suffolk County Department of Health Services right now for that approval, and then you know that will be installed. So we can make this all subject to Suffolk County Health Department approval and installation of the That sounds that sounds logical to me. Um, so um, okay, well if, if that's the case, then maybe what we need to do, if, if you all agree, is is direct uh, Kathy to write up a, um, a memorandum. Uh, it's not a public hearing. I'm sorry. No questions. No, there's no question. No question. Um, um, oh, questions are only, we only take them during public hearings. Um, so she could do a final conditional approval resolution for your next meeting. For the next meeting. Yep. Okay. Should we take a vote? Then we need to take a vote on that, don't we? You don't need to vote. Okay. You can vote on it at the next meeting. Okay. Yes. Fine. Um, then I think that sounds like the right thing to do. Okay. And it's get sounds like this will be in in time for this for the the season, which is good. Um, okay, so if you could do that for us for next meeting, that'd be fantastic, Kathy. Yeah. Super. All right. Doris, do we have um, Dust Downs online by any chance? Yes, we do. He's... Wonderful. Okay. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Okay. Now let's move on to um, number five discussion item. Um, number one uh, it's the application of Lynn Park Charbriat. Um, one thirty three. Um, I think, Ron, you're you're. I you're sorry, so sorry, sorry, no, just saying that loud. You know that, right? Yeah, one of the, the tenants of the owner in the front building. Right, so, right. So Ron is recused officially from this. Hello, uh, Dennis. How are you? Good evening. Hi there. So, you know, I just recently got a letter from uh, Kathy Eisman's office. Uh, requesting some additional information. So I'm not sure if we can get anything done tonight. Okay. Um, I have the surveyor looking at the possibility of creating another parking space, which was her main issue. Okay. Okay. So we'll table until the next meeting, perhaps? That's fine. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. for Thanks for coming in. Um, so I'll take a motion to table this to the next meeting. So moved. Wonderful. Second. Thank you both. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So that's the next meeting. Um, moving on to, and that, that next meeting is uh, March, gosh. March 26th. 26. 26th? March 26th. Um, Sun Harbor Yacht Club is, is the next meeting. This is a public hearing, or will be a public hearing. It's a site plan pre-submission conference for Sun Harbor Yacht Club 42 Bay Street, uh, Maycroft Club. Um, so this is this is pre-submission conference. This is uh, the intention of this is that we all can start seeing what what's intended coming, uh, for uh, proposal, um, and it's also a good chance for the public to see uh, what's coming at them uh, at this particular property. And that's why it's a public hearing. Um, so we will need to open the public hearing, uh, and I'll take a take a motion to open the public hearing. So. Thank Second. you. Second by Grania. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the public hearing is open. Um, and do you want to come up to the and introduce it? 
Yeah. You might as well just stay up here. I mean, you know. Stay up with my name. Chase Barlato, 45 Divisional Street, for the applicant. Um, I believe that the village does have plans. If you could put up the site plan, sort of. Um, the site plan? I have both. Um, the site plan. Okay. Um, so this application has been pending for some period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, we've waited a while to kick it along again and get it started. And I figured the best way to do that was via pre-submission conference with the board so we can get this moving, hopefully, in the correct direction. And while she's doing that, I'll start okay. talking about what the Maycroft Club is. Um, it's a private fraternal and social institution. It's a 501c7 not-for-profit that operates in the village. The name Maycroft references the summer home of Mr. and Mrs. James Aldridge of New York and Sag Harbor, built in 1885 and, lowered, and <clears throat> located on Lower Sag Harbor Cove. Mr. Aldridge was a founder of the now defunct former volunteer boat club and utilized his home as a social meeting place for local boaters who raced sharpies in the inner cove in the late 1800s. And this is sort of a throwback to that type of environment. The Maycroft Club currently has a lease for 42 Bay Street with the Sag Harbor Yacht Club, the owner of the property that has been a steward and a fixture on the village's waterfront for approximately 125 years. The primary goal of the Maycroft Club will be to bring together individuals who share a deep interest in local marine environment, maritime culture, history, and lore, particularly the preservation of Sag Harbor's maritime traditions. The club also aims to promote fraternal and social organizations and activities that support these interests. With a determined focus on the promotion of local maritime history, the Maycroft Club will seek to create a community of like-minded individuals in a local setting. To ensure the preservation of its historical materials and facilitate membership meetings and social gatherings, the Maycroft Club would like to maintain dedicated meeting rooms within its premises, as well as an office, a sitting room, a nautical library, a nautical historical fact, artifacts room. These spaces are will be for the use of club members and their guests and may be open to the public for exhibitions. Additionally, the club recognizes the housing, sh housing shortage in the village of Sag Harbor and would like to retain three bedrooms in the house, three bedrooms in the house specifically for staff housing. In furtherance of the village's desire to protect residential zones and nearby homes, the Maycroft Club agrees to limit the number of formal events exclusive of meetings necessary to conduct the business of the club, business of the club on an annual basis subject to the village code as it may be amended from time to time. <clears throat> the club's focus will be on utilizing its space for membership meetings, social club activities, and the preservation and exhibition of maritime and other historical materials. To maintain a peaceful and respectful environment, the Maycroft Club will not permit any outdoor public address system and will refrain from engaging in intensive outdoor activities except for off-street parking and trash removal. The club is striving to create a welcoming environment for its members, fostering a sense of camaraderie and shared interests with the goal of contributing to the preservation and celebration of Sag Harbor's rich maritime history. The property is located at 42 Bay Street on the corner of Bay and Burke Streets. The lot's approximately 0.7 acres in the, in the R20 zone and is conforming with respect to zoning. It's currently improved with a somewhat dilapidated single family residence. The surrounding adjacent uses include marinas, the village sewage treatment plant, parking lots, street parking, the VFW, a restaurant, retail stores, office space, and a few residences. The Maycloth Club pr proposes renovating the existing building within its existing footprint for its use, adding the required parking on site as per the site plan previously submitted and comply with all village code regulations pertaining to the use. Um, the area is fairly commercial and it is quite busy during this summer season and with the advent of the farmer's market and other scheduled events that are held in that area of the village, there is a dearth of parking. This site is intended to provide on, off street parking that the village needs and is also intended to provide housing for employees that work within the village and again, as well as a gathering place for the main club, club members. Um, and I think it's important given the history of this application to not think of club as a club. Um, the word club doesn't necessarily mean a tennis club, a golf club, a, a club is what the organization is called. It doesn't give way to the, it doesn't, in my mind, make it any different than sort of a moose lodge or some other organization that you have to join and become a member of in order to have this type of use. Um, and this is a use that I think, given Sag Harbor's maritime history is an appropriate use. We don't really have anything that is dedicated other than the whaling museum and not dissing them at all, but for a more current 
and less historical, more current view on maritime history and providing that maritime culture that we all grew up with and that's very important to the village and it's very important to the yacht, to the yacht club and the bay club. Um, they are a sister organization. They are sort of the, the not-for-profit arm of the yacht club. So the membership is does go back and forth. Um, but there are additional members that are members of the Bay Club Club and will be other members that are not necessarily members of the Yacht Club. Um, and again, that's just where we're starting. And I think we have a site plan up there. Um, like I said, it, you know, because this application has been sitting for quite a while, you know, this basic idea still remains the same as it was when the application was first submitted. Um, but the site plan may change the parking, obviously, is going to is required. That is what's required. Um, and it's also something that we intend to hook up to the sewage treatment plant that is not already done. <laughs> okay. And if you have any other questions. Um, can, can you bring some clarity to me? Sure. As, as you know, the, the, we have, um, we all have mm -hmm. lot, lots of images from um, a year ago. I'm not sure when they were all submitted. This is one of them from a while ago. Uh, um, just clarify for me, is, is uh, those images as, uh, that were submitted as part of the application a while ago, are those still valid or should we consider them in transition or something? I don't necessarily think they're invalid. I think that the applicant is still deciding on architecture and on things like that. So. Can you look at those and say, yeah, this is basically what it's going to look like, and the caliber at which they intend to renovate the property okay. it is going to be at a very high level. Um, it, okay. And I think you'll see something very similar, if not exactly the same from Skolnick. It just it's a matter of you know how, we, how we move forward at this point. But I think you know you can get a very good idea of what they intend. I just want to make sure it wasn't a drastic change and <laughs> that we're, you know, no, we have one thing that's going to be very different from the other. No, it's not going to be drastic Und at all. It's going to be Understood. quite similar to what's, okay. and very similar to the existing house that's currently there. We're not changing the footprint at all. Okay. Um, I have a question for you, Tiffany, if you don't mind. Um, and the, you probably also remember that the, um, the building inspector at the time, a year or maybe two years ago, um, looked at this and wrote a, wrote a memorandum and a, a determination that um, this would require a use variance, this particular use. Um, how does how does what you're proposing now, is it different but in any way from what, what he was referring to? I don't necessarily agree with the building inspector's determination. Um, I think that for whatever reason, it was not appealed at the time that it was issued, um, and it probably should have been. However, I don't think that it delves into it focuses very much on the term club and clubhouse because that was something that was used in the original application. And in turn, looking up the definition of clubhouse and then inserting that into a memo and saying, because they called it a clubhouse, it is a clubhouse. And this is what a clubhouse is. And it's defined as X and X is prohibited is how the building inspector, I think, came about that determination. And like I said, rather than reading and understanding what the actual use was about, he took the word clubhouse as a quote out of a out of an application and decided to write a memo. I don't even know who requested such a memorandum, okay. um, but such a memo does appear in fact in the file, you're correct. Okay. So it is, it, I will acknowledge that we do have a little bit of an uphill battle dealing with that interpretation that exists, even though I think it was faulty in many of the ways. Okay, well, we'll cross that bridge before we get to it. Exactly. Good. <laughs> Thank you kindly. Um, it's currently located in the R20 zone. Yes, it is. Yes. So would that trigger a change of use for R20? No, this is actually a special a special exception use special in the exception. R20 zone. It's permitted in almost every zone in the village. Um, I think, like I said, because it is a fraternal, it's, it, it is sort of your moose lodge, right. you know, your VFW, your, your fraternal organization. Right. I'm just trying to understand if it's going to zoning. I'm assuming it has to go to zoning for something or um, is it good? Well, the use would be the zoning board. It depends on how this yeah. plays out um, on whether or not we need to go to the zoning board for or the or the so in, for its own change. It, it, any it, of those things. In the prior, this this lived for a while yeah. um, in front of the build the, the village trustees in, in front of the, 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 exactly. the town board uh, or the village board. 
Um, and it, because of the change in the, the code is now in front of us. And in that time span, we've also have, we'll have a new building inspector. So there's, there's new things happening and, and there's gonna be alterations to the plan. Exactly. So, so there's um, some changes afoot that may help us. The legally, they should, have, they should have, if they wanted to challenge that prior to termination, they should have challenged it within a certain amount of time to the zoning board. Of right, right. And Tiffany referenced she's that. She's stuck with it. She referenced that, yeah. Time. Right. Okay. So well, we'll, um, it'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll work we'll with work that, that going forward. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Well, uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, so we're, you know, first with writing up a pre submission report, and to me, it's not really clear now what. You know, this would look like, and that's kind of a challenge when I look at the plans that had like the bar and so forth that were in the old plans. Right. So You're not going to see any of those things. Yeah. Is there? I mean, maybe if you could submit the revised product description, I and that, that would be helpful at least for at least to have you know an outline of what what is you know being considered, and we can so that you know what's not what what is right. the plans and what's going to not be yeah. the plans held. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. Right. We have a limited yeah. amount of input that we can get back, but the, it's you know what's in. Okay. Help. Fair. Yeah, that's a good point. And you make me think. You, you also referenced in your in your um, presentation the okay. idea of having um, some rooms for I guess living staff or mm -hmm. something. Um, can you flush that out a little bit? Um, uh, um, what are you thinking? Um, they, as I said, they do have a, a lease agreement with the Santa Maria Yacht Club. I believe that that agreement allows for the yacht club to maintain some part of that residence in order for employee housing. And I think that it, it's an important thing to have in the village. Yeah. Honest to God, I don't know where else their employees would live. Um, <laughs> if they're not going to house them themselves, you know, at some point they're not going to have any. No, it's, 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 it's a very simple sort of calculation in the head, you know, where else are they going to go? And this might be, this, so what you, it's not, it's not one large big apartment perhaps, but maybe no. it's, it's, it's place for, I don't know. Um, three, it, it's probably three bedrooms, you know, three separate bedrooms and a small kitchen and facilities. Mm -hmm. Similar to what they have at the church. As I said, they're, you know, they're a similar use right. to the R20 zone. Right. Um, they do have artists and residents staying right. in the property. Right. These are just employees that need a place to live. It's right. actually a more sort of benevolent cause as it may be. Right, right. Especially out here right now. <laughs> Good, thank you, okay. Um, um, and, and regarding, regarding the sewage treatment plant, there is, there is no, there is no, um, sewage, uh, hookup there yet. You, no. you're, you're aware of that. Um, okay. Uh, and it's, it's, right not, it's, the street? it's not in the street yet. The pipes aren't in the street yet. Yeah. Right. Not yet. The, the intention is to hook it up to, to sewage treatment because that is, that is the right thing to do, and I okay. think that everyone. And that'll require, of course, coordination with the village and, exactly. and permission by the trustees and so forth. Exactly. Okay, got it. Okay. So that will take one sanitary system off offline right near the water. Um. Okay. Um, Kathy, do you think you have enough to work with, or what else do, might we need to? Can, can we can we keep the hearing open? We do have to hear from the public. Mm, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why are we open to the public now? Uh, yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah, we might we might actually want to keep it open just so that way we can get clarity. Right. If we keep it open, then I can provide the updated project narrative. Yeah. And that way Kathy has a, the ability That's to That's fine. And I, I would consent. To That's perfectly fine. Great. That's great. I'm 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 happy with that. Um more public input. Um, so at this point, why don't we to open it to the floor or to online if there's anyone on, I'm not sure who's online, but if anyone wants to speak to this application. Uh, is a public hearing and we welcome commentary um, in any form. Nothing? No, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, in order to provide a path forward, that's what this is for, right? So we need to have that clarity on both ends. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so if, if we keep it open and you provide additional. I was just suggesting that maybe we keep it open for written submissions for 14 days since we don't have any public comment. Um, but, but this, if, if we you receive, want to see it. yeah, we receive items, then the board can comment on that as well. If okay. that makes sense. That's okay. Open. Okay. That's right. okay. Good. I'm fine with that. Um, folks, are you folks okay with that? Yeah. Um, all right. Then in that case, I think we're at a point where we can, we can uh, take a motion to uh, adjourn the public hearing, if that's the right word.
uh, or table it. So moved. Table it. Second by Nat. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. So it is tabled until March. I think we said March 26th, right? Uh, we will see you then. Um, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Uh, is there anything else that I'm forgetting, Bolts, or you need to bring up? No, I'll take a motion to close the hearing. The hearing's close the meeting. So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you all. And thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Bob Rock.